Hey, and welcome to Den and Denim. I'm Den, and today we're going to be reviewing one of the Levi's Vintage clothing catalogs, this time from fall of 2005. Sometimes I just need an easy week, and these are really fast to crank out, although I'm trying to make each one better. I know they get the least views, and they're really just for my hardcore followers. And thank you. You know, I think I just want to get these earlier catalogs out there so that they're posted up. You can review the items. And I need the other time to work on bigger videos. And this catalog will actually explain what I'm working on next. So I'll give you a little hint coming up. And thank you for all your views, subscribes, likes, comments. It's been fantastic many good things to look forward to coming up. I can start shooting 4K video soon and just trying to hype up the channel little tweaks here and there. Otherwise, we've got only a less than 10 items to review within this catalog and we'll start with the story. Levi's Vintage Clothing, Fall 2005, The Velvet Curtain. The Fall 2005 Levi's Vintage Clothing Collection celebrates the beauty, craftsmanship, and detail of the 1930s. The 30s was a time when the sharp edges of the Jazz Age were smoothed into a streamlined calm of Art Deco when sumptuous luxury was wedded to elegant simplicity. It was also an era of some of the most classic looks in Levi's jeans, a product created as workwear, but prized for its attention to detail and well-crafted functionality. A sense of newness and original thought permeated the decade. Jazz, America's indigenous art form, provided the era's soundtrack and Levi's jeans can be counted as one of its authentic design forms. In all its details, as they say, and this is the perfect definition of the design aesthetic of the 1930s, what mattered was that wherever the eye fell, it fell on something pleasing. Details also count when it comes to Levi's jeans. Denim connoisseurs relish the combination of design features that characterized the 1930s jean. The indigo midnight blue a lipstick red tab with crisp white lettering, the graceful arches of the arcuate stitching design, and the warm brown leather patch with its perpetual pulling horses. Nowhere else have luxury and hard work blended better. This marriage of beauty and utility can be found everywhere, from the photos of Dorothea Lange to the mountains and deserts of western dude ranches. Where non-Western types wore the Levi's jeans, jackets, and sumptuous satin rodeo shirts they bought in the equestrian shops of Manhattan. Once back at home, the well-loved clothing went into storage to become heirlooms of collectibles for another generation. The rich beauty and delicate craftsmanship of the 1930s styling have never gone out of style. These attributes remain today in the turn of the cuff, the curve of a pocket, and the swagger of the perfect fit of the original, the classic, Levi's jeans. So I'm really glad to pick this catalog. I know I've done another 2005 spring summer before and 2006. I have something really planned special for the lookbooks. So look for that in the coming month or so. And these are just, these catalogs earlier are just a list of clothes. And they have this little paragraph, a couple paragraphs of something, but it doesn't have the picture album that the lookbooks have. Now, these first two items are wonderful because we have a 1930s Menlo leather jacket and a 1975 Type 3 557 Trucker. I am planning 
about uh, five episodes on denim jackets coming up, covering pleated blouse types one, two, three, and other miscellaneous coats, and then doing leather jackets and focusing on the Einstein coming up in the next few months. So I need a little more time to work on that. Uh, the items in this catalog, I love. I love this, these 19, this earlier century uh, look. But then they'll sprinkle in what they talked about 1930s to 1940s, makes sense. But then they'll sprinkle in a little bit of 60s, 70s going on. So it's a little bit of this mix from this era to this era. That's when the Linux Lounge was open. And that's why we're focusing on that. So let's look at the really cool items and then we'll drop down to the orange tab that sneaks its way in here. Nineteen thirties Menlo jacket. This is the leather jacket from the time. It can be labeled as Einstein online, so be careful if you see that. It's not. Look at the pockets. These have covers on them and buttons. Einstein has buttons and pockets with no covers. But it is nice that it has the buttons. I can't tell if this is this darker brown, almost like a cherry wood, or if uh, it's lighter. It looks more like a caramel. I know they had this butterscotch color in 19 in 2012 and the same cut is this which uh, has a nice look to it love the leather jackets they are thin though but this one does have lining that is nice the next jacket is a 1975 557 trucker called Frank the 557 will be labeled as 70505 after 1967s but it's a it's still a type 3 trucker and this is 75 but it still has a big e tag going on i don't know if that's an error or if they still kept it on the coats for a few more years the distression on the arms right at the inside of the elbows fantastic honeycomb that is that wet bend right there is where you get that wonderful tones of distression, marbling. And it happens behind the knees or in the elbows on the coats. This catalog has two years of 501s. It has 33 and 47. And you can get uh, rigid 47s or distressed for 33s and 47s. These 33s, the Callaways. Uh, pretty intact. Cinch is cut off, which is going to be common in most of the vault distressions. Don't see an NRA tag, which is kind of the whole point of buying the 33 is to get that NRA tag. The 1940s washable wool plaid. I think this is one of the best of the flannel shirts they've made. It's just the classic coloring. It's mostly red, and then there's a little blue sprinkled in. I've seen two other versions very similar to this. I've seen red with black, and I've seen more blue with a little red. But most of their other flannels, they, they border on these like yellow, pinkish, green, just so many other colors than the traditional kind of uh, Scottish tartan that just blends in. It doesn't look too f fantastical. Then we have the 1930s trousers. I don't cover pants on this channel, and I will eventually, but we'll start talking about chinos, khakis, and all the other non-jean pants at some point. The 1947s, we have a dead stock, which means rigid, usually from like a previous year, the Charlie's. Another light distression going on, just a minor rip on the knee, but easily patchable. Otherwise, it, you know, just it shouldn't rip much more. One t-shirt that we can find, a 1930s graphic tee saying Lennox Lounge. And again, the Lennox Lounge was this Harlem jazz club that ran during the years that we're focusing on from this 30s to 
the 70s. Now we have three orange tab jeans. We have the 67606. This distression is called Jack. This one might be one of the proto orange tabs, which had a black tab with orange writing instead of the orange tab with black writing. These are super slims. They are eh, tight, skinny pants, uh, even have a little stretchiness. Even back then, they were experimenting with that. Original 66, 606s would have had no arcuate, one of the only jeans to not have arcuate. And there's no patch, no leather, no paper patch in the back. We have 71, 646 jeans. We have dead stock, which is rigid, and Fred, a distress named Fred. These are bell bottoms, just straight up bell bottoms they made. They made them as denim jeans, the 646s, but also as corduroy pants and Stapress pants. So out of those three materials, they made 646s, and then they also varied that off to make a 746 for students, which was skinnier waist and thighs and made for smaller body frames.